Welcome to Sailing Sea Dream of Clyde. I'm Trevor, and this is Kat, and together we're taking you along on our wild adventures through the passages and mountains of Alaska, British Columbia and Washington, and down the California coast to Mexico and beyond. So join us as we share an honest depiction of the cruiser's life, from fun in the sun to cold and stormy and everything in between. Thanks for tuning in to Sailing Sea Dream of Clyde and enjoy the episode. about six and a bit rolly but still making a great time heading pretty much where we need to go. I'm really tired. I guess tired too. Yeah. Been taking a little micro naps. There's no boats around but let's wake up every three to my mats and look around. Seven miles from San Martin Island. Twenty, I guess. By the time we're anchored to our anchorage, we're going for. Just about noon, so yeah. we've been underway mm -hmm. for, for a while. Sixteen, uh, fifteen-ish hours. Yeah. Yep. Almost there. We're just south of Isla San Martin and dodging a few outlying rocks that are out here. They're not marked um, with lighthouses or anything like that, but there's a couple that are, one that apparently is, comes out of the water and there's one that's only nine feet out of the water. So we don't want to get anywhere near those things. But we're uh, real close. We see our point that we're going to be heading to shortly and Kat's feeling great. I feel so good actually. <laughs> yeah, Kat is my best friend for sure. And there's some, yeah, there's been some larger sets of well and I've just been having fun with it which is really cool. Um, we've gotten some surfs up to like nine knots. Yeah it's been a great day. As we rounded the corner into San Catin, the wind kicked up a lot, and rather than reefing the mainsail with just a few miles left to go, we opted to drop it entirely as we raced towards our anchorage. This wide open anchorage made it very easy to sail onto anchor without using the engine, which was a real treat after such a great sail. Good morning. We had a lovely night here at San Catin and we're going to do a few chores here. First of which I'm going to make a little DIY flopper stopper, rocker stopper unit using some bucket lids that we bought for $4 each, which basically look the same as the rocker stopper, which costs $25 or $28 per unit. So it would have cost a few hundred dollars to make that set up. This is going to cost us about $20. So starting with some rope, and then drilling holes to the bucket lid and just tying knots and using some weights on the end. Okay, I got my bucket lids here and I'm just gonna drill the holes through and then use this old line for that we took off from our davits. So let's do that. Okay, I got the holes drilled. Now I'm just gonna thread the rope through and tie stopper knots along the way to secure these. So they're about 50 centimeters apart or 40 centimeters apart is what folks on the internet suggest. A rocker stopper is a device that you put over the side to dampen roll caused by swell coming into anchorages that are exposed to the open ocean. After many rolly nights along the west coast, we were eager to try out our own rendition. This is what it looks like now, and we'll try it out. You got the line. Kind of feels like there's less motion. What do you think? Um. Now we're just going up and down. We aren't really rolling so much. Yeah, great success. All right. Well, we're still at San Catin. 
and it's just out in this big open bay and we've seen a couple of panga boats go by and one came by and offered us a huge bucket of clams. Here's the clams that we were given. And I gave them some beers in exchange too. And Kat's making the chowder. Yeah, I've actually never made chowder before. So mm. it's been my dad's game. Nice. There's sauteed onions and garlic, a little bit of carrot and thyme and a bay leaf in there. And then we didn't have any kind of like vegetable stock or anything like that pre-made. So I used a cup of water and the better than bouillon. Mm. We're gonna put potatoes in it. I'm gonna use coconut cream Yum. since we don't have other kinds of cream. We forgot to take much more footage that evening, but the chowder did turn out great. It's bright. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know what to say, I'm too tired. We're at San Catin and departing right now at about 8 a.m. There's a nice northeast breeze, so we'll get to Beam Reach at the start here. We have about a 130 mile sail today, and it looks like there's really not much for navigation, just keep on heading south. Yeah. I almost feel like we're in a lake. Yeah, just really slowly moseying out of the anchorage here. Looks like there's wind up ahead. So, let's keep moseying. When you have 130 miles to make, powering for an hour is kind of like whatever. Make five miles, but I think the wind will come up pretty soon here. All right, Ben. That's right. Oh, hey there. Um, Hydro is doing all the work here, so I'm just uh, restringing my mandolin while I'm wearing my underpants, because that's what you do when you're offshore sailing, or at least offshore style sailing. Offshore conditions. Steady winds, swell. Yeah, anyways, good sailing right now. We got the uh, Cuddle Station Supreme set up. And yeah, just pull out the mandolin, which I haven't played for a long time. Oh, I just poked myself. Getting some fresh strings on it because these ones are corroded and rusty. So yeah, that's your 11.30 update. In offshore conditions out here, we're in well over a thousand feet of water, so the swells are nice and chill. We're only about uh, 10 miles offshore right now, but steady sailing, it's really nice. It has been a delightfully fast afternoon. The sailing's been really good since probably about 11 o'clock. It's now three and just enjoying ourselves. We've been watching shows, laying in our big cozy bridge deck bed, and looking forward to a good night of sailing coming up here. So yeah, that's about all. Actually, that's not all. Cat is doing so good. Munching and eating lots of food. I'm doing so good. It's so good. I'm having such a lovely time. Yeah. It's like for real. Yeah, it's awesome. It's funny, the combination of being out in a big open ocean and watching <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> yeah, <It's> super chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah. But I am really looking forward to getting to the um, ben Benditos. Benito. Yeah, Benito Island. Or Benito, Benito fish. Benito? Benito. I'm really looking forward to getting to Benito. Yeah. yeah. There's a balloon right there! No! Right there! there. Oh my, we almost hit it too. That's tragedy. Uh, Why? Why is there a balloon? No. 20 miles from shore and. Oh, oh it just got hit 40 by 40 miles from any town. A little white cap. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty funny. Uh. We're cruising along in our nice sea berth, <laughs> the bridge deck here, where Cat made these wonderful cushions. And just reflecting on the fact that. Mm, a month and a half ago, you we were talking about this Baja West Coast bit where we have these longer offshore bits and how most certainly we would need to have another person on board to help out. And then Kat was even questioning being on board, but here we are. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's pretty cool when you just stick with something long enough and just keep working through your fears and anxieties and whatever else. And also that the ocean is actually changing and it's a lot mm -hmm. mellower down here too. Yeah. Yeah, so we're wing on wing right now. 
Uh, wish we had a whisker pole. That was really goofy of me not to have one on board. But yeah, the sailing's great. The sun's gonna go down soon, so we're gonna make kind of a snacky dinner. Some edamame, some rice, carrots, and hummus, stuff like that. Yeah, just keep it simple. Yep. Yeah. It's piped up here just as the sun's setting, but it's all good. We're bombing along on like six or seven knots, eating the edamame and cooking some rice. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. All right, it's uh, about 10 p.m. and we were uh, resting on our little companion way and then we almost got hit by this. A squid flew, flew in to us. It just landed on wow, here. I was like, what's that? That's amazing. I think it's still alive, so I'm gonna put it back in the water. So I heard like this little tiny thunk and then I smelt fish. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and I like, felt over here and there's this little squid, or like felt this goopy thing. Like, what? <laughs> Than the others. Yeah. That was crazy. That was hilarious. Wow, I wanted to come snuggle. There there's another one over there. Yeah, there is. Oh no. Huh. Wow. Anyways, while we're at it, we are flying along. We've been going like, like we're averaging 6.7 knots right now. And we've been doing that for a long time. And we set it up wing on wing at 3 o'clock. It's 10 p.m. now. We have not touched the helm. So it's pretty sweet. And we should be getting to our destination. Right now it's like sunrise, so apparently we're getting shri uh, squid on board right now. There you go. <laughs> hey squid, what are you doing buddy? I'll put you back in the water. Yeah, and so I just shined the light into the water and I can see a bunch more of their eyes as we're racing along here. That's pretty cool. That was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's really fun though. <laughs> All right, we are coming up to Isla San Benito. After about just a little uh, under 24 hours, we've been sailing and we've made um, about 130 miles now. So very happy about that. It was a nice night of sailing and the sun is shining bright. We're looking forward to anchoring up and having a meal and a good sleep for a while. Let's we'll carry on here. We're just going around the east end of the island. There's some vague wording of much shallower depths than charted reported in 1983, so we're just going around that little mark, and then we'll turn in and uh, be in the lee of the island and probably get out of the swell here within uh, 20 more minutes or so. No, it's not coming in. I think we're just gonna have to drop the uh, halyard. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so, Kat, you're gonna have to pull the whole sail down, okay? Okay. I don't know if anything's broken. Um, find out. <laughs> we can still sail. So I don't know what happened, but when I started to try to furl the Genoa in, it wasn't furling, it was just, the furling line just kept coming off on me. I don't know if it was intention enough or what was going on, but uh, I was investigating that. Also, this uh, little piece came off and luckily landed on the deck. It, it's not an essential piece, the non-racer feeder, I guess. This thing right here. So yeah, feeling lucky it was just sitting right, right by in front of the windlass. So just investigating that, gonna have some food and then go to sleep. Okay, All right, so the Genoa is fine. Um, I think that just all the rolling around the last 24 hours, it, I didn't have it taut out the furling line and I think it just sort of like worked its way into uh, like kind of loose so I just was like pulling the furling line nothing was happening nothing was happening um, so it was the right choice just to drop it and then deal with it once we were safely anchored and everything's all good. Or so we thought it was all good. As you'll see in a few episodes the issue was intermittent and kept coming up at bad times until we figured out the real issue. 
All right, I don't know if you can see that panga leaving from us, but two fishermen from these little islands came over and asked if we wanted some lobster. So um, they went out and they caught some more lobster and came back with a bunch for us to eat. So we traded them a good amount of pesos and a couple of beers, and now we have way more lobster than we could know what to do with. How many did they give us? Six. Six. Six lobsters. Look at them all. Yeah. So I think it's just the tail we eat, so we'll figure out how to do that, how to take them apart. And Here. we'll definitely be eating lobster yeah. tonight, and then we'll probably end up freezing the rest. Yeah. Wow, what cool creatures. Yeah. Hi! Oh, aren't you precious? Oh, going down to find it. Bubbles. Oh, are you playing with it? It's playing with it. Yeah. No, with the the piece of lobster. I was just playing with it. Yeah. All right, got the lobster cleaned here, and I'm just gonna dunk it in the pot. See what it's like. I've never really had lobster, so there we go. I assume we just cook it like crab. Boil it up. Something that surprised me when I popped out is this big streak of foam coming from the surf just over here. Oh, and here comes the seal in the foam. Come here, little buddy. Oh, he's right here. That is so cute. Here's our cooked lobster. And here's what the finished product looks like. Big chunk of meat. Tastes really good. We're on land for the first time in a few days now and just land on this little pocket beach. The rock's quite smooth, so it was pretty, pretty all right landing. There's good surge here, but I uh, didn't notice until we were on the beach. There's a, a fur seal just sitting right here. Well, so we just came out of this little tiny cove uh, to jump over to the other one and I walked up right over there and then saw that there's a super sweet looking seal. Oh, he looks so sleepy. Oh, precious. Oh. <laughs> um, we can go around. It's not going to charge at us if we go all the way around here. Yeah, it, the last it's just gonna leave, it's leaving now. Yeah, see how slow it is on this rock? Yeah. Yeah. We're coming that way, so go that way, buddy. Come on. Okay, Let's just go up where right above it. Oh, you're so cute, I'm sorry. Beautiful barren desert landscape here. This volcanic action, it's super gorgeous. Super nice to be on land too. We startled these ones. It's an absolutely beautiful evening up here and it's such a cool landscape like I've never seen before. All this different shrubs and bushes and flowers and it's really gorgeous here. Hey, you think? Yeah, it's really gorgeous. Uh, it's, I can definitely tell too by the way the seals are and sea lions are reacting to us that they don't see too many humans. Mm -hmm. So that's real special. Very nice to be on land again too after I think a full 72 hours, yeah. three days. Yeah, feels uh, sturdy, nice and sturdy. <laughs> so here we found ourselves some 300 miles away from just about anything other than a few small coastal towns surrounded by uncharted waters and the powerful ocean swell. The windswept landscape was harsh and dry, but life was everywhere. We walked carefully, avoiding stepping on the fragile desert plants as best we could, and trying not to accidentally startle the fur seals again. 
After all the busyness that is much of the California coastline, we were thrilled to have arrived at this remote group of islands. Yeah, it's another lovely morning here at uh, Benito. Some of the local uh, fishermen came by and uh, traded a fish for some wine. <laughs> so we're pretty happy with that. It wanted to go fishing, but I just didn't feel like going off in the panga at the moment. Maybe later. It's a beautiful day here, though. We slept good, and it's a little little bit rollier because there's less wind to hold us to the swell, but uh, it's, it's pretty good now. So just going to clean up this fish and then clean the boat up a bit, and then we're going to go ashore a little later. I already got the head off, but it's a nice big uh, yellow... Yellow tail. After a nice morning aboard, unwinding from a lot of travel over the previous few days, we headed to the fish camp on shore to say hello and head for a hike. The guys there were very friendly and welcoming, and one of them joined us for the hike. While the language barrier was a challenge, with the help of Google Translate, we all had fun getting to know each other. Oh, we got, uh, my friend. See, okay, my yeah, friend. We got yeah. Yeah. Six. 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 See. Yeah. Yeah. And eight. Guarding the edge of the Pacific Ocean, we were continually blown away at the raw beauty of this remote group of islands. Despite being harshly dry and windswept, we observed many different types of plants, saw lots of birds flittering around, and noticed widespread evidence of ground burrowing animals across the landscape, which we assume was from a type of bird. My name is Ponchito. Trabajo? Uh, from yeah. my yeah. work, fishing, lobster, um, abalone, uh, caracol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, fish, um, yellowtail, uh, halibut, black sivas, mm -hmm. uh, vigilancia. Mm -hmm. Vigilancia. Um, and uh, surfing. Yeah, surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I surf. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> And mon motorcycle, motorcycle. Yeah, motorcycle. Like, mon yeah. Yeah. How do you say the channel? YouTube. No, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Sea yeah. Dream of Clyde. How? Sea Dream of Clyde. Sea. Sea like Dream. Sea ah, okay. Yeah. Nombre del, del Name boat. of the boat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sea. sea Dream of Clyde. Of Clyde. Yeah. Um, Suscríbanse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After checking out the newer lighthouse atop the island, Ponchito led us to the now defunct but far more impressive older lighthouse located on the northwest point of the island. We contemplated the stories that lighthouse keepers that used to live here would be able to tell. We're sure the room would be filled with talk of powerful storms, incredible sunsets, and no doubt about the plentiful wildlife seen in the air, on the ground, and in the rich ocean that surrounds this epic place. <laughs> Here, uh, hold it up, cat. Wait, we'll, we'll pull this way. Yeah, I can see you. I can see you a few <laughs> times. This hike was a real highlight of our trip so far. Once we got back to the fishing camp, we were invited to stay for fish taco dinner with the fishing crew. We left the camera off for that, but had a great time communicating through Google Translate some more and lots of hand motions. Ponchito and his fellow fishermen were so welcoming and fun to hang out with, and generous too. They sent us off with a big bag of filleted fish as we said our goodbyes and headed back to Sea Dream of Clyde. Thanks to the crew at Isla Bonito, you helped make our stop at this beautiful island group an extra special experience. Thanks for watching Sailing Sea Dream of Clyde. In the next episode, we depart Isla Bonito 
and have a nice sail to the uncharted south end of Cedro Island for a stop at a wild anchorage before continuing to Turtle Bay and beyond down the Baja coast. If you enjoy these videos and want to gain access to some extra Sailing Sea Dream of Clyde content while also directly supporting the channel, be sure to check out our Patreon page via the link below. Bye for now!